good afternoon everybody and welcome to the Sunday Chill where we're going to do some crafting and some painting today. So I hope you're having a lovely Sunday, um, got your cup of tea or whatever you're drinking this afternoon ready. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different and um, we're not going to make a card today. I'm actually going to do some watercolour painting. I've had a few of you ask me there was a card I showed on Crate and Craft and we did a, a sped up video on my YouTube channel of some loose watercolour flowers using the double up paints that so many of you ordered recently. So if they're starting to land on your door now and you've, or you've already got them, uh, then let's have a look at a way of using them without, you know, just colouring the stamps or making backgrounds or something like that. I want you to maybe try having the confidence uh, to do some freehand stuff on just a blank piece of paper. So just to let you know what I've got here in front of me before I start, I have got a couple of pieces of watercolour paper or card. This isn't too thick, it's about 200 GSM. Um, don't worry if you haven't got that, if you've got a say 300 GSM normal piece, that's fine, but you will notice that there is a difference when you're doing freehand artwork on a uh, watercolour card. Personally I prefer it then. I always say you don't need it for your card makes, um, you know your card making, but it is nice um, if you're going to do something as a piece of art itself, maybe for a gift or a wall hanging or something like that, it can be nice. So I've got one to practice on and one to do my actual piece and then I've got a, a black piece and we'll do the same design in white on the black. Um, so then also on top of that I've got a pencil and I've got a couple of different sizes of watercolour brush. I've got a 4, an 8 and a 12 I think. I may not use all of them but I just wanted to show you what happens when you use the different sizes with the different kind of strokes that we're going to do. So first of all, if you've never done anything like this before, I would have a practice with one of the colours and one of your brushes and just do some practice strokes. So let's say take the green, this is pistachio, the lighter more kind of limey green and it's up to you how much water you add so again this is kind of a place so I'm going to use like half of this page just to show you so if I was to do a leaf I go I take the point of my brush just to tap the page and then I press down and then lift up again and it gives you that kind of standard leaf shape and then that's with lots of colour, hardly any water. If you want to do a more subtle, just add some water so it's more watery. So that's the same colour, just with more water. So you can go either end or in between. You can do your leaf strokes long. Let's try and do them with lots of colour. For the camera so it shows up. You can do your leaf shape strong, you, uh, long sorry, you can do them wider and then fill in the middle. I like to for roses and things do those wide ones and then leave a little bit. So have a practice at just that movement of tip of the brush on the paper, press down, and then lift up, tip, press down and lift up. That will give you beautiful leaves. The other stroke that we need, I might need another piece of paper actually to practice the drawing. Let's get one out ready. We'll do some petals as well, practice on here. And we can do more of this if you want to see this even more in depth or different strokes and things like that that I use for watercolouring. So a petal, if you think of a standard petal shape and we'll practice 
draw in some in a moment. So it's something like that. And then you can either colour in solid. And again, I tend to use that same stroke, but just wider. You know how we did this leaf here? I go down a little bit, but you're not coming up in a peak, you're taking it round. And then if you want it slightly more watercolory, you can water it down, you can go even further than that. So you're having it, you've got that point at the one end where you start, but then you're curving for the edge. That's even more water. A little bit of white there left. And then obviously you can change the shape depending on, you know, is your flower facing the front? That would be a kind of head on facing petal. But then if you did longer ones, that might be far by the side. You do have flowers that have that long petal shape as well, a little like a leaf. Think about a daisy petal, but then you might just want to round off the edges. So it's a good idea to have a practice with those. Let's have a look at those close up. We've got some different leaves and then some different petals. The reason I say do this on a scrap piece first is that if you haven't got a huge amount of experience doing this, and uh, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not, I haven't got qualifications, I'm just self taught from playing around. Um, but it's the confidence that can get you. So if you go straight onto that, you know, um, blank piece of paper first for your finished piece and the pressure to get that right and that uh, that finished piece, doesn't matter how many other pieces you've got, for some reason in your mind, if you've told yourself that is the finished one, um, then the pressure to get that right is really great. And sometimes you don't know where to start on the kind of fear of that blank page. So this helps you loosen up a little bit as well and is a good idea, you know, even for me when I create pieces for the wall, sometimes I'll just have a play around and just confirm, even if I know in my head what I want to do, just confirm the kind of leaf shapes, the petal shapes before I do a finished piece, particularly if it's for a gift or a wall. So I'm just going to pop that aside for a second. In fact, let's keep it there so we know what we're looking at. And then the next thing to do is, of course, you can go in on your finished piece and uh, just start painting. But again, you may want to just sketch out a very, very simple uh, loose outline that you don't have to 100% stick to for where you want your flower to be and what size you want your petals, where you want your leaves to come to. So it's up to you. You can start with the middle of your flower, uh, which is sometimes what I do. So I don't want it completely central say about here and my flower is going to be slightly on the side so the middle of my flower so let's do it slightly darker than I normally would for you guys normally I'll do it that very light like you saw but it, again it doesn't always work for the camera you can do a another circle or oval depending on whether you're having it on the side to depict I don't want any of my petals to come out pretty much further than that. So again, you would do it lighter. You can always rub this out when you finish painting. Um, or sometimes once I've done this, I can use this to kind of copy. So I haven't actually got to use it. And then I'm going to start bringing out some leaf shapes. Again, this is darker than I normally would do. And some petal shapes, sorry. And I tend to go, when I'm doing petals, rather than work all the way around clockwise or anti-clockwise, and then I find that I've got a funny shape that I can't fit anything in, I tend to go kind of diagonals. And you don't want them all uniform for this kind of look. I don't know how many I'm doing yet. A 
And of course, this piece here, these pieces are kind of closer to you. This is slightly on the flat. So something like that, and then decide where I want my leaves to come out from. So I'm going to do a kind of couple of, keep your hand really loose and flowy. One of the things that I found when I started that I was still holding my pencil as if I was writing. So I hold it, I mean, you're really probably supposed to hold it like halfway further up when you're sketching. I find that difficult because I hold my pencil for now because I have um, a joint thing called hypermobility. So I find it, I need that bit more stability. But you can still try and keep it further up than you normally would. Certainly, we're not pressing like this. We're loose, flowing movements that do not have to be exact. Does that make sense? So we've got some leaves coming from there. Maybe do some up here as well. I feel like that's too symmetrical. Uh, might do those coming out from there instead and then maybe maybe some here we'll see but that's kind of a rough sketch then like I say you can use that to paint over and then once your artwork is completely dry you can rub that out or I'm going to use that as a guide and just have it next to me um, and work freehand. Just having a sip of tea before I start. So let's have a look. I'm obviously going to start with the petals rather than the leaves and work outwards. I'm not going to worry about the little middle bit for now. We can add that in after. So my petals, I'm going to use a combination of that bright rose and the heather, which is kind of lilac -y. so I'll just add some water to those paints and then I'm going to use one of the lids as a bit of a palette so you can use one two colors Sometimes it's nice when you're doing petals to use two mixed together because then you can get variation in your petal colours by not 100% mixing them. Can you see that? Add a bit more colour. Okay, so let's have a go at... So I know roughly where I want to start. It's not going to look exactly like that because I'm not painting over it, but... Again, that doesn't matter. There's two strokes for that we practiced for the petals, and then just filling in. This one's kind of tucking in behind. Keep it smooth if you can. With this particular style, I don't tend to overlap and keep the petals touching. I think that one's touched slightly, but it's no big deal. And let's squeeze one in there. very loose it's no particular style as such and can you see I've got a nice variation of the heather and the corals because I didn't completely mix there so that's the petals done that's really simple isn't it and really quick 
And like I say, it doesn't completely look like that, but you can see actually I prefer this to that. And some of that is about loosening up first and having a practice. And then when you come to do your final piece, it's actually can be better. So let's get some of the spearmint and the pistachio for our leaves. And again, to get some variation, I'll use both. I'm having it fairly thick here. It's not too much of a watery consistency. It's quite creamy still. And I'm going to swap to my smaller brush now. So when you have your practice with the leaves and, oh, I've splashed there, that's okay. Um, your leaves and your petals, play around as well with brush sizes because you'll get different effects and different sizes, obviously, of your leaves and your petals. So I want like a nice sweeping motion to start. Try and do it in one stroke, but don't worry if you can't. And then I'm going to bring off one leaf using that down up stroke. And then add some extra ones onto that branch using the same thing. If you need to define the tip of your leaf, so that one's not quite pointy enough. It's absolutely fine to do that. Just do it while it's still wet. And I tend to do my leaves in odd numbers like you would do with sequins and things like that and embellishments, but you don't have to. So I've got five there. Let's do another one of those. At the top here. With your leaves you can start doing them straight or see that one's got a slight curve and all I've done is do a slight S. Once, you, once you've got the basic straight one you can start playing around at the angle that you want your leaves to come to. In fact I'm going to have it like a little loose one here. And then you can start adding some extras if you want to. And I'm varying the amount of leaves on each branch. And the slight shape of them. Some of them are attached to branches there and some of them are just loose. Okay, so there's a couple of things to do on there now and that is, let's add the middle. And this is just pale okra, very little water. And I'm just dabbing. add some little dots to the centre and then the final thing to do so I'm going to get a couple of colours and just add some splashes so I'm going in with some yellow just to because there's lots of pink and lots of green but I will add a little bit of green as well So they're quite fine splashes because I've done them with a small brush. But I hope that's helpful of how to bring it, it together. So I'm going to do another one but just white on black and see how that one comes out in comparison because the fun of this is that they're never exactly the same. You could do two flowers. 
could do one coming from behind the other. In fact, let's should we have a go at that. I'm going to go back to my size 8 brush. Just clean it off and get some of that gorgeous pure white, which I absolutely love on the black. It's got a splash of water there. And I'm going to go quite quick on this one because I've talked through it, but the theory is exactly the same. The only thing I do with the white on the black is to make sure it's really as smooth as I can get it. Sometimes I just go over those petals. If I want it more of that opaque white, if you don't and you're quite happy for it to look more of the watercolour where you see some of the card come through, then you don't have to do that. And you see there with slightly less paints. Oh, can't pick it up. You can start to see a little bit, but I like that look too. It's um, you know, it's still more opaque than you get with a normal watercolour on black anyway, so So just doing exactly the same process. I've moved it slightly over to the side because let's have a go at putting another flower behind in a moment. So I'm going to make some of these other petals a little bit more small than before. Okay, so that's the one flower. And then, yeah, what if we were to have, I'm trying to visualize where the center of the second one would be, so I'm thinking around here and then come out. So we're kind of going to see it from its side perspective. But again, I don't want them to touch. Probably should have sketched this one out before, really. But hopefully, once we put the leaves in, you kind of get the idea that the other one's sitting behind. So, just swap brushes again for some more leaves. Oh no, we're doing in white, aren't we? Mm. <laughs> it's getting the green out again. So, yeah, still swap brushes, but do it. We can add the center in as well there.
the same, down and up. Down and up for your leaves. Yeah, I'm not sure, oops, just rubbed on that one. I'm not sure I'm totally happy with how that other one's sitting behind, whether it really looks like it's supposed to be another flower. I could play around with it a little bit longer, but I think maybe I should have variated how, how much white is used maybe and have this one might do a second layer another time or something like that but still it's all right I just would have maybe sketched it out further but again it's no I know that for next time then it's no big deal just a final couple of leaves Okay, I think I'm happy with that. And then what I really like to do, you know, we did some splatters there. I really like to do the splatters in colour on the black and white then because it looks really, really fun. Do some larger ones with a larger brush. And some of the yellow, the pink and the yellow really makes that white on black pop even more. Okay, so we've got the black and white and we've got the colour. And really have a play around and see what you think. But the biggest learn here, yes, you can make some nice wall out or trim those down. That's a five by seven piece. So I could pop that straight on a card and add a sentiment. But the biggest learn, I think, is to practice some sketches, practice some leaf and petal shapes and give it a go. I hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I will be back again uh, Thursday with Thirsty Thursday. Take care. Bye.